Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the uh, the Shriners Children's uh, Open PGA uh, slate for this weekend. Um, happy uh, uh, Yom Kippur for those who celebrate. I'm actually taking a break from the holidays to do this video. Uh, hopefully uh, it works out as well as we did last week. Uh, for those of you that were on everything that we were talking about last week, and especially Dean Burmester, who put on an incredibly... Uh, very worthwhile performance uh, at much lower ownership than I thought he was going to be. Uh, I did very, very well last week. And from what I heard, people that were on him uh, did very, very well uh, also. So hopefully we can continue that um, this week. What we're going to do is we're going to go through range by range. I'm going to go over my top plays in each range. And then at the end, I'm going to uh, kind of recap it by re-emphasizing the top plays in each range. When I talk about who I think is going to win the tournament, who I think is going to be top 10, top 20, things like that. So uh, you'll notice that there are only three golfers at the top, uh, meaning over 10K. And you have Cantlay and Homa and Sunjay M. And I actually do like all three of them. Um, I have nothing, you know, usually the top of the range is, is a range that you don't get to all that often. But in this particular uh, event, with these particular projections and models, I do like all three of them. Now, you're going to get a healthy degree of ownership on Cantlay. He's you know 30% plus. And Sunjay M, I have him rated about 20 25%. You get a little lower ownership on Max Homa. He definitely rates a little bit lower, but, but not by that much. So I think that Homa is a pretty decent 13% owned golfer. Um but overall, I think you're probably going to get, you know, mostly at least one of those in most of your lineups, uh, which is fine. I mean, I have, I have no issues with any of them. Where it gets a little thin for me, at least, is in the 9K range. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven guys in there. And I really think that only one of them is someone I'm going to want to play. Um, Aaron Wise shows up as, as a very strong play. Um, and he's... Carrying ownership as well. I mean, as he always does, he's getting maybe about 15% ownership. So, you know, you're not getting any, any bargain there, but I do think he rates to be a very strong option. The other guys are a little bit fishier. So the, the next guy I have rated is Taylor Montgomery. And I got to go all the way down to say 15th top value to get to him. And um, I'm also getting ownership of about 15% on him as well. So that I think is going to be, probably something of a fade for me. I mean, it's close. I mean, if anything, I would advise that if you're playing Montgomery to play him with lower owned uh, compliments to the lineup, but probably going to end up not really getting too much of him. Um, and then, I mean, you have Cameron Davis and Tom Kim, who I rate very, very similarly, which is just kind of average. I mean, for this range, I mean, really not that big of a deal. And their ownership is pretty healthy. I mean, I'm getting Cam Davis about 12%, Tom Kim at 13%. So I don't think that this 9K range is particularly exciting um, uh, th this this weekend. Now, again, if you get to them, I'm not going to talk you off it. But um, if anything, the 9Ks, I would take the ownership discount, which is going to be severe, and play um, and play Alex Norin. He is he is pretty close to um, to these other guys uh, in terms of projections and things like that. He's never really done that much for me in you know in 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 PGA. I mean, I played him in the Fortnite. He got at like thirty six. I guess that's okay. And then he went. And he got a T two in the Dunhill. Um, I think if anything, that just is going to make him maybe a little higher owned. I don't know. I don't know why I wasn't on him in Barracuda. Um, uh, I'm not sure, but he's has shown up in models from time to time. And I guess he does show up here. So at 5% at ownership, I think that you could play him and I would probably play him in GBPs over those other nine K guys that I talked about who do rate a little bit higher. Um, hopefully that makes some sense. Um, you get into the eight K range and you get to three, four, you know, maybe even five guys who I think are in play, which is really, really strong and is really the the key range of of, of the whole slate. Um, and you'll see there's only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like eight eligible golfers in the range, uh, plus plus Harmon, so nine. 
So this is where you're going to get the majority of your good plays, at least as far as I'm concerned. And just to cut right to it, the guy who shows up as a top overall play on the slate for me is Keith Mitchell. Um, I have him rated literally number one overall. And I see his ownership at only about 7.5%. For me, that's a that's a really good combination. I mean, I'd like to be a little bit cynical and think that, you know, if, if I'm seeing all this, then other people are also. And so the ownership is going to get juiced a little bit. But I don't know how much more it could, it's going to get juiced from that. I mean, the ownerships are usually pretty decent as far as the projections go. So I don't know. He does rate to be the overall best play on the slate for me, though. And then when you go down the next best play, you go down to Maverick McNeely. Um, and I have him rated about ninth or so and ownership below 10%. So I think that's reasonable. And then the, the next two guys I have are our old friend from last week, uh, Burminster, who I think is re- totally reasonable again at 8,500 at about 7% ownership. And then I have Brian Harmon, who is 8,900. I have him rated about 10th or so and ownership below 10%. So I think that's pretty reasonable also. So I think that this range is pretty, uh, is, is pretty good. And if anything, this is, this is what might keep me off of those 10 K guys. Like if I, if I want to play like several of these eight Ks, you could build a really cool kind of mid range build with them and not get to any of those top guys. So it's going to be, you know, these are the decisions you're going to have to make if you're hand building um, with respect to, 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 you know, to lineup construction, because these AK guys I mentioned do look pretty good. Not to mention, okay. Um, how good the seven Kings look. So, so here is, this is, this is, this is, this is the cool, real, the really cool part about DFS. So if you want to play the 10 K guys, you're going to probably end up playing the seven Kings. And that's good because the seven Ks are actually pretty strong. Um, on on this slate. And let me just highlight who I think my favorites are. For me, my overall favorite play in the 7K range is going to be Seamus Power. Um, I have him rated second overall and his ownership is less than 10% at least. So that looks really, really good. Um, and then you have, you know, a whole bunch of guys. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it off at like at the at the player who I think is going to be too highly owned. So I'm not going to include Adam Hadwin in this because I have him at 10%. But what I am going to do is I'm going to give you four other really good, in my opinion, um, 7K guys to screw around with. One would be Mito Pereira. I have him rated fifth overall, and I have him 6% ownership, if that's possible. Then I have one of my heroes from last week, Mark Hubbard, who did really, really nicely. And I have him you know, less than 10% owned and a good play. And then I have K.H. Lee at 7,700, who's pushing 10%. So that's, you know, getting a little bit whatever, but uh, it's good enough. And then I have Taylor Moore, who is at 7,600, uh, who rates to be a really strong play as well. So as you can see, without even filling stuff in, I mean, if you play a bunch of these 7Ks, then you could jam in whatever these 10Ks and up that you want, you know. Um, uh other guys in the 7k range exist but i just feel as the guys i mentioned are just better it's the best i can describe it if you do a full 150 max build maybe you'll get to some of those other guys but i just i you know i just like these other guys i mentioned better so with that said i mean when you have like really strong plays in the 7k range really strong plays in the 8k range stands to reason that the 6k range is usually going to be you know pretty ignored um and that's the case for me. I mean, my my my, my top six K and seven K, you know, sixty nine hundred under guy doesn't come until the thirty second ranked player, which is, I mean, that's pretty well down the list. Um, it happens to be Patrick Rogers at three percent. So you need one. I, I think that he's my favorite. And the funny thing is, is, after that, I mean, I'm going way down to like number fifty fifth rated guy. So. I really don't think you need to play guys in the 6,900 and below range to make your lineups work. I mean, I've gone over all kinds of good stuff with 8Ks and 7Ks. The the, the range that's going to probably fall off for me is probably the 90, the 9K range, um, with the exception of maybe Aaron Wise. But Aaron Wise, even still, I mean, at 15% ownership, I don't really need to play that if I can find all these good plays in 7Ks and 8Ks. So that's, uh, that's that. Um, 
All right, so let's kind of summarize. And and again, uh, if all that went too fast for you, let me just kind of slow it down by just repeating kind of who I like in each range by answering the following questions. Is Number one, who do I think is going to win the golf tournament? Well, I mean, this is going to come as no shock, but I would say that Patrick Campbell um, rates to win the golf tournament. What's a guy under 10K that I think is, can finish the top five? Well, because he rates that much higher than everybody else in his range for me, I mean, I would say Aaron Wise. Who's the best 8K guy to come in the top 10? Um, I got to go with my man. I got to say Keith Mitchell. Um, even though he's a flat 8K, I have him projecting really, really well here. So I'm going to I'm gonna go with that take. Sub 8K, top sub 8K guy to come in top 20. I'll flip a coin between Mito and Seamus Power and come up with um, Seamus Power, I guess. And then the top six, seven K guy under to make the cut. Again, I only mentioned one guy total, so I have to go with him, and that would be Patrick Rogers. Um, and, and that's pretty much it. You know, uh, watch for withdrawals. Watch for you know, watch for. I guess that's it. <laughs> watch for withdrawals. Uh, watch for watch for a late uh, projection run for me. I might do one later tonight. I have to see. Um, how tired I am after fasting and coming off break fast and things like that. But um, uh, these are pretty tight the way they are right now. And uh, that should do it. Good luck. Hopefully we get a good sweat on Sunday as, uh, as usual. Uh, good luck.